Hello, hello, hello. I think it looks like it's on. Testing. Yeah, looks like. Are we live? I think we are live. How's it going, everybody? How's, how's the mic quality? Yeah, we're using a new mic this time. Good. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, no headphones uh, this time around. We're just using the mic. It's good? All, All right. right. Hello, <laughs> welcome to Let's Talk Gunpla, episode, what are we doing? 14. 14, 14. Yeah, Eddie had to do some family stuff tonight, so I'm going to be filling in for him tonight. So it's going to be me and Ben for tonight. So how are we going to... All right, well, um, first, if you guys uh, are new to the stream, I'm Ben, aka Uber's Cosplay. Um, I mainly do props and armor and that kind of thing, but I also do giant robot model kits. Uh, I'm usually here at Flynn's on Thursdays for Built and Paint Night, uh, helping out with the club, that kind of stuff, and just working on my own models and stuff. Thank you, Sean, for the stars. And I'm William. I'm basically Eddie's partner. Help him uh, kind of, you'll see me here on Thursday nights. I usually leave a little bit early on Thursdays, kind of help him out throughout the store on those nights. Same, I'm a big Gundam fan. Never really got into the model kit building, but... Fortunately, I'm going into the Warhammer community, so I'm going to be doing painting and other stuff as well. <laughs> it, was, it was nice knowing you, Will. <laughs> Parting is such sweet sorrow. We, knew, <laughs> we hardly knew ye. But yeah. Um, so if you guys have been keeping up with uh, Flynn's Instagram and stuff, you probably saw that we finally got some new kits in from this recent shipment. Yes. And so I wanted to dedicate a lot of this episode to highlighting some of the kits you guys got in stock. We'll talk a little bit about the anime, uh, talk a little bit about painting and stuff like that, because uh, this one is actually a good chance, because the kit, one of the kits we got is one of the first kits I ever painted, so it'll be a cool segue to show people like, if you've, never, yeah, like if you've never painted before, some of the stuff you can do on a budget, and it'll give you a good chance to see too, is like how bad I was at this when I started, <laughs> and hopefully I've gotten a little bit better. Well, then you can show people how to what paints to or could use because I know that's a right. big you know what paints to use. Yeah, and a lot of people are really intimidated by getting into it because there's there's a lot of costs associated with it if you want to get into airbrushing and stuff like that. So we'll talk about some other options if you don't really have a lot of money to throw at it. Some things you can do to still customize your kits, get them cleaned up or customize them with different colors and things like that. Yeah, so what do we have this one right here? The first kit. Into? We have, and this is kind of one that's uh, especially important to me. This is the RGM ground type. This is the basically the Gundam mass production type. It's a basically a, a simplified version of the Gundam for use by grunt soldiers. Specifically, this one is from the 08th MS team. This is kind of like one of the, uh, the no names in the background, yeah. but it gets a master grade kit as well. And this is a quite a bit older kit. This is actually from 2001. So it's actually a very early entry in the Master Grade line. So it's a bit more simplistic than some of the newer ones. But uh, considering the, the designs from the show are very blocky and utilitarian, it's, it doesn't really suffer from being an older kit. It's still very mobile. It has a lot of really nice detail. It's very accurate to the show, like in the style. Like I said, how everything's very blocky. But um, this one was actually the first kit I ever painted. And you can probably see some of the details on it aren't so great because I really didn't, I wasn't too good with a fine hand at this point. Like some of the details on the side of the head are a little bit blurry. But this was actually painted up with Tamiya rattle cans. The rattle cans are like this. The rattle cans are a really good option if you want to get into painting and maybe you don't want to spend a lot of money on an airbrush. Um, the rattle cans run anywhere from, you know, five to $10 a piece, depending on the color and where you're getting it. Um, not a lot of, there's not a lot of local options to get them nowadays because most of the model shops have closed down, but uh, Testers has a brand as well um, that you can buy at like Hobby Lobby and stuff like that. And they're mostly comparable. The shades are a little bit different, but, uh, the good thing about these is you can tell by the size, you can usually get through one or two kits quite easily with how much paint you get. The only downside of using rattle cans is it is quite a bit of spray, so you have to make sure you're 
doing distance. it in, yeah you have a good amount of distance you don't want to do it in like an enclosed space because it'll make a big mess and uh, you want to you will tend to use more paint than you would if you were using an airbrush so if you're going to paint like a lot of stuff in the long term these are kind of a stop gap eventually you do want to get into and invest into an airbrush and a compressor just because it'll save you money in the long run I mean you get about you know one one or two kits out of a eight dollar can of rattle can here whereas a 10 milliliter bottle of Tamiya paint you can thin that out and stretch that much further for much less money but like I said is it can be difficult to get into airbrushing because there's a lot of uh, starting price with the price of the airbrush and the compressor can run anywhere from you know one to two hundred dollars depending on what you're looking into but yeah we'll talk a little bit about this kit I've mentioned the show in a previous episode but uh, 8th MS team is pretty much like uh, Vietnam with Gundam for lack of a better way to explain it like everything is uh, Sorry, I'm just trying to get the camera in the right setup. There we go. Kind of like a more guerrilla warfare. Yeah, it's, mu it's much more grounded. It was actually one of the earlier Gundam side stories, which just means is the original story, while that's happening, there's all these other conflicts going on in different theaters and different parts of the world. This is focused on a story in Southeast Asia, specifically with what's going on with the 8th MS team. And like I said, these are the kind of the grunt units running around in the background. But the really good thing about these as kits is between all the 8th MS team kits, they split up the weapons. So the it's encouraging you to buy pretty much all the units from the show because if you do, you'll get a full set of weapons. Like this guy, he comes with the beam sniper rifle, the machine gun, a regular beam rifle, as well as a missile launcher. Whereas the ground gun comes with a large 180 millimeter cannon, and then the uh, the Easy Eight comes with a bazooka. So if you want to get like the full weapon setup, you do have to get the whole team. But they all look really good together, so it's a really good idea to have all three. I actually do have all three, but this is the only one I have painted at the moment. There's additional details too. You can see that there's some um, decals and stickers. The decals on the shield and on the shoulder. These are the heat transfer decals I've mentioned in the past. They're not like water slides. You can just tape them to the outside of the kit and then rub them in with your finger and generate heat and that transfers them onto the plastic. The stickers, there's a little more obvious because it's always difficult to hide stickers. There's always gonna be like a little bit of an edge around it and a little bit of silvering, but not too many on this guy so it doesn't really hurt the look too much. Um, it is an older kit, so there are some details you will need to clean up if you want to go through it thoroughly. Like you will notice there are seam lines going straight down the middle of the head. It's basically like a clamshell, two halves that go together. And you can see I've done a little bit of panel line work too, but at the time is, I think I was just doing this with like a, basically like a, like a small calligraphy pen. I was pretty much new at this. I really had no idea what I was doing. That's why it's a little bit muddy and kind of faded around there. But um, if you've never really built a model kit before, I keep on mentioning Master Grade. Master Grade just refers to a higher size and level of detail in Gundam. Like this is a simplistic design, but even though it's a very simple looking suit, it's got a lot of gimmicks built into it to give it a higher level of detail. So let me just show you some of that. Put his machine gun down. But just as an example of some of the details on it, the cockpit hatch will open up so you can see inside the cockpit in the chest and there's even a little cable a scent wire that folds out of the side because in the show when they need to get into the suit oh, okay. like a cable will drop down from here and it'll wire them up to the suit so you've got nice little details like that and there's even additional little details like there's ammo packs on his skirt for the machine gun I can get them off of there there we go. So he's got extra ammo packs for his machine gun. So you can have them like he's reloading mid-battle. And his swords are stored in these little compartments on the sides of the legs that fold out. I don't have the swords in there right now, but the handles, you could grab them and pull them out. He's even got little movable thrusters. 
on the backpack. And like I said, even though this is an older kit, it's pretty poseable because the design is so simplistic. So he's able to have a very good range of motion in his legs. So he can, he's very easily able to do that kneeling pose that so many model kits struggled to do for so long. He's able to do it pretty well. Just as an example, before I drop everything. Yeah, but it's able to crouch down pretty well on its own. Yeah, but this is a really good kit, I think. If, you're never, if you've never built a Master Grade before and you want to do something that's a simple first-timer, this is especially good because it's, a, like I said, a very simple early Master Grade. And you guys actually have one for sale for, yes. I believe, $35. So it's a very low price point. It's not much more expensive than a large high grade. Or a real grade. Yeah, or like a real grade. So these are really good ones to have. And they're good for army building, like I said, because you can have this fit in with other units from the same series, like a Zaku or something. It'll look very good on your guys' shelf. I've done a little bit of painting on this, like I said, with the rattle can, so the colors are slightly different. Let me go ahead and grab the box, and I'll show you guys what I mean. Put this guy aside. And bring that camera out. The box for the kit. These older Master Grades, what I like, too, is they came with these nice little display packer, placards inside the box. So if you didn't want to save the box, you could still have some nice artwork with the kit looks like completed. They don't have these in the newer ones, really only in the older kits. But to give you an example of why painting is important is this one comes with like, it's a very bright, almost comical orange. I don't think that looks good on its own. That's why I was very insistent on painting this guy. I went with like a more drab, um, almost washed out orange. But you can see here, too, some of the other weapons he comes with. This is part of the missile launcher and the beam, the large beam sniper rifle. And you can only get the sniper rifle with this one in particular. Like, it doesn't come with the other two kits. So that's kind of what encourages you to buy, like, the whole team so you can get everything. More of the internals. And you can see it comes with a sticker sheet and a decal sheet. The decal sheet gives you options as well if you want to number the suit uh, a different one. I went with a number three on mine, but I think the only team you see in the show besides the ape team is team number four. And you can see like kind of an off-white for the main armor. Very close to the color I picked, but mine's a little bit duller because these guys are fighting in the sand and the dirt. I kind of wanted to make them look a little bit more dull, even if he doesn't have any weathering. It wasn't really at that point yet. Two runners for his missile launcher. Another runner with armor and some internal details. The swords and the clear visor piece. Pac-Man. And then the last of the internals and more of the armor. And something you will notice is this Master Grade actually comes with a few screws. Early master grades to make joints stronger would use screws in certain places to tighten up joints. Specifically, this one has screws, I believe, in the forearms just to tighten up the joints. Um, you don't see that a lot in kits nowadays. They've very much moved away from that. But it's good because this kit, like I said, it's from 2001, and you can see I'm shaking him around. and He's still he's, pretty sturdy. He's very sturdy, and he, he's been sitting on my shelf in different poses for a long time. So, the screws do have the advantage that he is a very strong kit for as old as he is. Like, like I said, there's no rattling, no real, no real parts falling off on him. It's very stable. So, like I said, I think this is a great kit if you were looking to get into your first Master Raid. You guys are selling them right now for $35. If you're into 08 MS team and you have some of the other kits, it's very cool to have this one just kind of sitting in the background with the yeah. rest of the ones because you do constantly see them in the background of the show, but they never really get a lot of play, so it's good to give them some love. And here's a good, uh, good example of some of the older instruction manuals. 
uh, at this point in time, they were not bilingual, but still it's very clearly laid out so that anyone can pretty much put these together with very, you know, minimal, you don't really need to know any Japanese. It's everything's pretty much clearly laid out. But what I like about some of these older manuals is they included a lot of drawings of internal details, like mechanical details. Easier to see. Yeah, yeah. like these are, you, these are usually artwork done by Hajime Katoke or uh, B Craft, which is like an artist group that worked with Bandai. So let me scroll through some of these pages. Yeah, and you get like this really cool artwork of all the internals of the suit, like all the mechanical bits and pieces. You don't see this quite so much on the modern Master Grades, but they used to always come with these, and I think they're really cool bits of artwork to have. So they do like a breakdown of all the different weapon systems that come with the kit. And then you get the fold-out page in the middle of just some really cool pictures of the kit all painted up. And you can see some of the internal frame detail. That's what Master Grades are mainly known for. You can strip away parts of the armor and see some of the detail on the mechanics within. It's a bit simple for this kit because it is an older one and it is just a GM, which is a very grunt, you know, run of the mill type suit. But it's still cool to have that extra detail on the inside of the kit. And just going through more of the construction. And when it gets to the back, you see the additional, like I said, they are encouraging you to buy other kits in the line. So you can take the backpack from the one and switch it over to the GM and mix weapons between them. Yeah, so very cool kit to get. And we have it here for 35. If you guys are looking to get into your first master grade, I think the GM ground type is a great choice. Good entry level. Yeah, very good entry level kit. And it's what, 1 100? 1 100 scale, $35. And you could probably build that in about one night. If you want to get more into it in painting, like I said, I painted this guy with rattle cans because at the time is I didn't have anywhere to build stuff and I didn't have money to blow on a compressor or anything like that. But with rattle cans, I only bought a few colors. I really only bought the orange and the beige, like the, uh, the frame, I just had left it bare and just had the clear coat bring the color down. So it really didn't need anything additional. Um, other than that, a little marker. If I were to redo this now, I'd obviously do like a lot more weathering to it. Yeah. But being that, <laughs> being that I was still in high school when I built this, I didn't really have access to any of that stuff. But it's still cool to have, and I still like it to have on my shelf as just an example of where I, where where I came from, from and how much I've progressed, I'd like to think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you put this guy next to like my weathered up Zaku, and he looks like he just rolled right out of the factory. <laughs> like brand spanking new. Yeah. Yeah, so that's one kit we got that you guys can go ahead and buy if you want to come in for the club. And if you want to segue into the club, I don't know if you could switch to the other screen. Right over here. Yeah. Can you scroll down on that? Let's see. Yeah. If anyone is curious about what you get with the club for 25 bucks a month, you'll get a exclusive Flynn's uh, Gundam t-shirt. Sticker, 10% off all the Gundam model kits in the store, as well as the concessions. Uh, once a month, you'll get to order alongside us from our distributor. Usually on the 15th. Usually on the 15th, but it varies. And the distributor has tons and tons of stuff, not just Gundam. There's like One Piece model kits on there. Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball, Digimon kits, mm -hmm. older mecha anime, like some Dragon R kits. And so, Star Wars, uh, so they have pretty much a lot of different options as well. That and as well as some paints, brushes, and stuff like that as yeah, well. Yeah, even some tools and things like that. So if you're just looking to get into, like, for supplies and stuff like that, it's very cool to check out. You also get to come in and play for free on Thursdays. That's also a build-in paint night. Yeah. So if you want to come in here early and get some gaming in before you know you crack open a model kit and get to work, you can do that. There's also a good deal, which is you buy five different kits on different days. You'll receive a half-off discount coupon when you buy the next kit. Uh, you'll get a monthly care package. The care, care package would be anything like small tools, brushes, anything. It varies every month. It varies every month. Basically, we're always just going to try and make sure you get some kind of supply or some kind of goodie just to keep you know everyone in the club happy. 
And you're going to get access to an exclusive Discord channel where we'll post up information about when the monthly order goes up. And you'll also get early access to any classes or events that Flynn's holds. So if you're interested in the club, go ahead and check out the links down below and everything. And check it out. We have quite a quite a big crew. And yeah, we're <laughs> building up quite a, yeah, exactly. Thursday nights are... Yeah, nice. Thursday nights we got quite a crew, guys. So come on out and meet everyone and see what everyone's working on. There's always some interesting stuff. It's a great way, too, to see like some of the stuff that you might not normally see, might not normally be something you're looking mm -hmm. at. See everything else as everyone's it working just on. Not, it doesn't need to just be Gundam. We have other people building other stuff and other genres as well. Right, like you got uh, Sean working on the Warhammer. Yeah. You working on the Warhammer <laughs> stuff now, too. We'll see. We're going to have to figure out ways to pull you out from behind the counter so you can start doing that. But there are people that come in here... Mm -hmm. Like last week, I was working on cosplay stuff. I didn't yeah. even have a model kit because I, I need to get back to working on my cosplay stuff now that I'm in my new place. Everything's unboxed and everything's Everything's out. unboxed. No now more excuses. It's, now it's always <laughs> screaming at me to get back to work. So, yeah, come on in on Thursdays. Check it out. We always got some good stuff. It's always a good time. Yeah. And I figured, too, we could talk about some other kits you guys have in stock because we actually got quite a bit now. We're getting in, we're getting in the groove here of what we need to get, so... This is kind of like a little throwback to my girlfriend as well. Well, this is her favorite character. I'll just keep a normal camera. From Gundam Double O, we basically got his entire lineage of suits. These are the suits that Lothon piloted in Gundam Double O. Go ahead and switch to the other camera. This is the Gundam Dynamis from Gundam Double O. Um, this is Lockon's suit in the first season. It's basically like the long range sniper, sniper of the team, yeah. as you can tell by his rifle. But he's also got these cool kind of cloak armor bits around him as well. I don't believe this one comes with the pistols. So let's take a look at what he comes with. Yeah, I don't see any pistols. So. But Gundam Double O, I've mentioned in a previous episode as well, it's a setting that's very much based in uh, like modern geopolitics. It's very much like about uh, like power crisis, energy crises, and uh, conflicts in the Middle East and things like that play a large part of the story. So it's very, very grounded. And the designs are very unique for Gundam. This was actually, these were actually designed by a guy who I think was new to Gundam. Like previously, previously he had done designs for um, Full Metal Panic. So very, very utilitarian, very grounded, uh, realistic looking mech, mech designs. And I'll actually talk about him in another episode in the future because I had some more of his designs to bring in. But the Dynamis, this is a high-grade kit, so it's smaller than the one we were talking about previously. Lower price point. This one's actually only $15. What is it, three runners, looks like? Yeah, it's, let's see. We got the green runner, a little rubberized one, because they have, like, rubber energy cables. And then you've got a mostly white one with a few red and yellow parts. And then looks like one more gray runner with the weapons and everything. So, yeah, pretty much just three runners. And a little runner for the polycaps and a sheet of stickers. You will need to use a, quite a few stickers on this one to make it color accurate, but it's not too bad. But cool kit. And this was this was my girlfriend's favorite character in the show. So <laughs> between the two of us, we have every version of this guy's suits. And I actually brought in one that I had painted up for her. This is not using rattle cans. This one was actually done using an airbrush a few years ago. Let's see if I can adjust the camera. Yeah, there we go. This is the second suit he gets in season two. This is the Gundam Cheridum. It's obviously very much in the same design style with the green and the white and the long range weaponry. But the cool thing about this one is he actually has some additional weapons as well. All these little shield bits on the armor come off and they actually have their own weapons and they can fire at the enemy independently. Or they can just act like a shield for him and block incoming shots. The kit comes with a stand so you can have them arranged in different ways around him like they're either on defense or attack. Um, I prefer just to have them on one of these 
stands, like the in-flight poses. And the weapons on him actually do a few cool things as well. Like he's got these pistols, but they're also axes. So these are his melee weapons. He doesn't have swords. He has like these little hatchets. And then the handle can fold down. So he has the pistol mode as well. There's a additional sensor that can fold out of the backpack over his eyes. I don't have the part with me. And this kid actually got damaged at one point. So the little, or the little yellow crest is actually not original. I had to actually take parts off a few other older kits and make a new one because the old one had gotten lost. But uh, this was all done up with an airbrush. That's why there's a little bit more shading. I was obviously more confident with my painting ability at this point. Um, a little bit of post shading on the gray areas. You can see that there's a little bit of highlighting on the lining. And same thing with the green. There's highlights around all the edges with a darker green. You can see the difference. <laughs> yeah, it, make, it makes quite a bit of difference than just the rattle cans. Oh, and the other thing he could do is his rifle can change modes as well. It has the long range mode, where it's the full on sniper rifle. And then you can break off the barrel and have it connect like that. So it can also be like a submachine gun. And this can also connect to the shoulder with this little clip that folds out. So if you wanted to have them store the rifle and have them use the pistols, you can store that up there and then give them one of the pistols instead. But a very cool kit. And you can see is um, as the series progressed, there was like a, a year or two between the seasons. So you can see like the technology yeah, they have is getting better. Like previously he didn't have like these remote shields and everything that would launch off. The funnels. Yeah, he had like the shield around him, like yeah. the cloak, but now he's got full on funnels. So the technology gets better. And the last suit he gets, we also have here, which is the Gundam Zabi Knife. This one I haven't built yet. I probably, I might leave here tonight with it. I haven't decided yet. <laughs> but this goes even further. Rather than just having the shield bits, now he's got shield bits and rifle bits. So he can attack from all directions as well as set up defense. And this is what, from the movie? This is only in the movie, yeah. So he, Yeah, I just found out about the movie maybe a couple months ago and I finished both seasons. I didn't even know about the movie. Yeah, the movie um, is pretty short and has to do a lot in a short amount of time. Especially when they've been building up the whole series. Um, the whole series is basically revolving around this one guy who set up this really complicated plan thinking that humanity was going to run into aliens at some point and he had to unite humanity and get their technology up to be ready for it. Well, the movie, they finally show up and they are still not ready for it because <laughs> they, get, they get stomped really badly in the early parts of the movie. But anyway, um, it's been a few years after season two, so obviously like, technology has gotten better again. And it gets to the point where like one suit is like more powerful than the entire team was in the previous series. So just to give you a little example, you can see all the different weapons he has. He has like, yeah, eight shield bits and eight rifle bits. And each one of those is just as powerful as pretty much everything he was packing in the last season. But quite a bit more runners than the previous one. You still have quite a few color correcting stickers. It is still just a high grade, so I do expect to have to do a, quite a bit of cleanup on it to get it looking exactly as it does in the uh, animation. And you've got two runners here, an additional bag, and you've got two Shields. more runners just for the shield bit, so quite a few parts. Let's get the guide here so we can show you some of the artwork. Yeah, and at this point, I am... Um, You've seen the show, so you remember how he's got the Haro in there helping him yes. out. At this point, he's got two of them helping him out because <laughs> there's so much, them. there's so much remote yeah. weapons he can't handle them all. So he has two computer units just to help him out, commanding them all. Yeah, you can see these shields. I like how the the shields aren't just like a backpack; they're actually hanging off his lower, off, off of like the back of his lower pelvis. It's just yeah. an, it's an interesting way for the gear to be carried. 
And they stuck to the colors as well. They have, like that dark olive yeah, draft. Yeah, very dark green. olive drab green. In the movie too, he opened like all these panels on the armor open up, and he's got tons and tons of missiles as well. But the high grade doesn't have that. Sorry. <laughs> Pac-Man is really loud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, a very cool kit. If you have the others, it's very neat to have all three so you can have the entire lineage. And you can see like the very clear progression in the designs as they went on. And like I said, my girlfriend's a big fan of the character, so she had to grab everyone she could see of him. Yeah, I'm still looking for that Master Grade one. It's like the only Gundam I'm looking for. Soon, <laughs> soon. Because I'm very tempted to get the Dynamis Master Grade as well. How are we doing on time? It's around 7.30. All right, so we can talk a little bit about some of these other kits we got. And this is one. It's a go big one. Switch, yeah, go ahead and switch to the other camera. This one's too big. This is one we had in the past, but it's very popular. I know yeah. people want it again. It's the real grade Evangelion Unit 1. With the? With the launch cage, yes. Um, in the show, they all like the city is all underground. So when they want to launch these guys, they actually go up on like these like, uh, like these rails that shoot them up from the underground base. And this one actually comes with that stand. Uh, that's why the box is so much bigger than the normal one. But the real grade kits are pretty much the creme de la creme in terms of detail. Uh, tons and tons of parts. Every little detail is pretty much perfectly represented. And the articulation is pretty much second to none and like I said just all the extra stuff this one comes with like he has the launch rails for the stand there's the base as well and this this stuff doesn't come with the normal release of the kit the only way to get it is to get this larger one and he also comes with a lot of extra decals and things for that additional base but uh real grades not really beginner friendly um, because of the complexity and the number of parts and how small the parts can be. And this kid, I've seen it before, it's a little bit slender. It's not like a normal... Right. Gun, it's... Evangelions, like as a design, are much more like organic and lithe than a Gundam. Mm -hmm. So, like, the you can see just like the proportions. Everything is very slender. Let's, let's switch to camera two. Yeah, you can just see by the proportions on the artwork. Sorry. It's a very slender suit. So you will have to be careful with it. Some parts will be fragile. We've had quite a few guys come in here building these. So... Then we've been asked for the other suits as well, which were right. going to be... We've got other ones on order, like some of the other colors uh, from the other characters. Like I know we have Mari's on pre-order, which is like the pink one. And when we see the others come up, we'll be ordering those as well, because these are always pretty popular. Um, especially Evangelion having its like big anniversary right now and the new movie is going to be coming out fairly soon i think it's the last of the movies now they've been slowly doling those out but uh this is a little more expensive than the typical release because it comes with the uh the launching stand and everything this you guys are selling for 80 dollars. i think you also have the one without yes we have just the uh yeah just the suit for you i have think 55 just the evangelion you guys are selling it for 55 so if you want a lower price point you can go for that one if you're not too interested in the stand I think it's pretty cool to have the stand. If I was gonna pick one out, I'd probably get this one. But uh, complicated kit. It will need quite a bit of work just because the parts are so small and the detail so extreme. Probably don't expect to finish this in one night. This is gonna be a multi-day. Hello, hello, are we back? I think we're back. Yeah, sorry, little... we lost internet for a second. Exactly. Yeah. I don't know if you're... If you're out there, senpai, can you see if... Uh... Mike's still good, everything's still running. Looks like everything's still running, so should be good. A little hiccup. Yeah, That's I think all. we're good. All right. All right, so yeah, uh, Evangelion, uh, a bit more of a cerebral anime than yeah. typical, than typical <laughs> Gundam Fair. Uh, <laughs> but even if, even if the show is kind of insane, the designs are very cool and worth checking out. So let's go ahead and set that guy aside. And then I have one more that you guys got in that I wanted to showcase. And this was actually one 
that I saw come up on the order and I wanted to definitely put on there because it's one that I liked, especially from the show it was in. This is the Gundam Age 1 Full Glansa. Uh, Gundam Age is another Gundam alternate universe from a few years ago. Uh, this one actually came out in 2013. But the Age, Full, Age 1 Full Glansa is one of the last suits to show up in the show. Like the whole deal with Age is it follows a family across three generations. Um, like the grandpa, mm -hmm. his son, and then his son. And when it gets to the end, they're all three of them are fighting together. And Grandpa oh. comes out in his <laughs> in his old suit, but it's not just a piece of junk because he's got a, the full glancer now, which is basically the old suit with a ton of additional armor and weapons. And Granddaddy can still kick some butt. <laughs> which is what I like about that. I have a I have a thing specifically for bruiser designs, like the heavy armor, heavy firepower ones, and I also have a kind of a thing for the ones where it's just like it may seem outdated. But it's got power, which is very <laughs> much the age one full glance up. So uh, I have not seen that one. A age as a show did not do well. <laughs> and it's not that it was bad. It's just that I think they set the expectations very yeah, high. Yeah. Like when you see like the, uh, the business proposals for what they thought the series was going to do, they thought it was going to be like three times as popular as Gundam Seed. What's he saying? We're connected, but we're just lagging. You want to switch to the other one? Try again. Yeah. Let's see. Okay. Looks like we're okay. running smooth again. All right. All right. Sorry, we're having problems. With A little power bit problem the with the internet. Yeah. So anyway, um, like I said, they have technology, but they kind of lost the ability to advance their technology any further just because the time just the people don't know what they're doing like uh the government has basically held back technology uh, okay. because they don't they don't want humanity going out and running into these these aliens more or less they're not really aliens but i'm not going to spoil the whole story <laughs> but uh Is it really aliens in no it's not really <laughs> <laughs> they're from they're from venus but they're humans <laughs> but um anyway they have, the main character Flit has this computer system built into his Gundam called the Age System. And what the Age does is it will take existing technology and just kind of brute force new solutions for problems out of it. So it's kind of like self-evolving. It's self-evolving, but I, the reason I like the concept is because the computer is so dumb about it. Like it, it solves problems in very much the way like a brute force computer would. It's like uh, the beam rifles in the beginning of the show will not pierce the enemy armor. So what does the computer do? It just makes the rifle spin. So as the bullet shoots out, it spins like a football, and uh, it gives it more piercing power. <laughs> the gun's not actually stronger. It just comes at it from a different Best. way because it doesn't know how to make the beam stronger. It just improves the piercing ability. Or it's like... Um, so, it's, it, so it's like a psycho frame. Not psycho, but uh, what's the other... In Double O has the... Yeah, yeah, like the yeah. Uh, the uh, Trans Am system. Trans Am, exactly. Yeah, where it's not really any better. It's just they get a big boost of power temporarily. Or it's like uh, at one point they're they're trying to fight in melee and their their melee weapons are outclassed. So what does he do? It makes new limbs for the suit that are like super heavily armored and they're just covered in spikes. <laughs> <laughs> best defense. Uh, was best exactly. Offense it's just like well, I don't know how I don't know how to get through this armor, so I'm just gonna plow through it. It's. <laughs> I like that just because it's like a, it's very much like the way you think a computer would try to approach a problem, like a, kind of very brute force and kind of dumb. But uh, the full Glanza, it's the Age Gundam, the original Gundam with all this additional armor and weapon on, weaponry on it. You can see he's got like additional armor on the torso, a beam rifle kind of claw on either forearm, additional armor on the legs, as well as these two huge uh, cannons on his back. So let me go ahead and open this one up. Very bright colors, because this is like a very much a hero unit. And then you get a lot of more dull colors for the additional armor. Some red for the wings that come out of those cannons on the back. The swords on this one are especially neat, because he doesn't just have like uh, two swords he carries. The beams actually come out of the claws on the forearm. And then some additional parts there. You've got the hands and everything. 
Yeah, and then you can see the Arwick of Flick. He starts the show as a young, as like a 14-year-old kid, and by the season three, he's like 60. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but like I said, Grandpa can still kick some ass. He does a pretty good job of it in the show. Yeah, then you can see there, it's posed out with all these cannons and its additional armor. But uh, like I said, the show did not do terribly well, and I think that was mostly because that concept of like all the additional armors was not really used as much as it could. Like in the first season, he has the Gundam Age has three different armor setups. It has the Titus, the Spalo, and then the Age itself. The second season, it only gets one armor variant. Uh, so it doesn't really keep on going with the it was very, different. It was very apparent that they were kind of running out of steam, I thought. And then when it gets to three, it's the same thing. It only gets two, and one of them is only used in one episode. Oh, so it's like, what's the point? <laughs> yeah, and it's like, there was like a, a Nintendo game, I think it was for the DS, and there was like 16 additional armor packs in this Nintendo game that were never given model kits. And some of them are really cool. Like there's like a one that's very much like a like an armored knight that like yeah. has a shield and like a spear and like this big uh, broadsword. And it never got it never got any representation outside of this video game because I get the feeling like they just kind of ran out of steam with it. But you do see a lot of age stuff show up because the the kits were very well designed. It was just the show wasn't terribly popular. But you see a lot of kits from this show show up in like uh, the later series of the Tri Fighters and the Build Fighters series. Mm -hmm. A lot of age kits show up on that because the designs are good and they just add some additional equipment to them, change the colors, alter the design a little bit, and they work very well as a modern kit, even though they're you know, getting a little old now. Well, even with the, the, the Build Divers, the new one, with the new kit that, with, like you said, like different armor sets. Right. New. Yeah, you can see like in Build Fighters uh, Re-Rise, that concept coming out again, where yeah. it's a core unit switching out armor but that that one's quite a bit uh, more fleshed out than this because in that he's changing armors like every other episode yeah so they're really keeping up with it it's almost got like a, a common rider feel to it where they're constantly switching out the suits and things like that but um this personally is probably my favorite design from gundam age the age full glanza and it's one that didn't get a lot of action in the show i think it only shows up for two episodes but this is as good as the Age one ever looked with all that additional equipment. So if you're into Gundam Age, or if you're just into like those heavy duty bruiser units with tons of armor heavy and firepower, and... yeah, like you saw like yeah. before, I was getting like all the virtue <laughs> units. I, I love, I like, I like the fat Gundams. What can I say? <laughs> but uh, I might end up picking this one up too, so someone else doesn't grab it. I have to kind of control myself because if I if I had my way, there wouldn't be anything left for the club by the time Thursday rolls around. <laughs> So if you're in the club, come in here, use your discount, pick up a kit. This is just like a little sample of what we have. There's tons of stuff here. We, we got a definitely got a full. Yeah, we, we're getting more. Uh, we're getting better at what to order and keeping uh, stock levels up. So there's quite a few high grades. There's quite a few master grades. We've got more stuff coming in. I'm going to be doing another order for the store tomorrow as well. So we're stocked up plenty for the holiday. Going to get a lot of variety in. Some cool kits some more rare kits for you guys but come in check it out see what we got keep an eye on the instagram too and yeah get yourself some gundam age one full glance of buy it so i don't <laughs> yeah help ben out yeah help help my brother out huh yeah well uh, what are we doing on time we got a little bit of time a little bit um we were talking about like some of my early kits, and I had brought in that uh, GM because that was master one, grade. Was master grade? It was one you guys had for sale, but um, it was also like I said, one of the first kits I ever did. Um, and my first kit I ever got was like this really crappy, no grade V8. This was like a time when they didn't even have high grades. Yeah, just it was just whatever just they had the was what it, was what it was. And now they're just kind of referred to as no grades, but it was this no grade V8 that I had gotten from like my sweetheart back in high school at the time. And uh, years, years later, like when I got into airbrushing and everything, I went back to that old kit and rebuilt it just to kind of, you know, return to my roots. And so I actually brought that guy in. If you want to go ahead and switch to the other camera, just to show some of what you can do with some hard work. 
to some of these older kits. Let me get, see if I can get the light back in here a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, this is the No Grade V8. I think this kit came out in 96. So it's very, very, old, yes. very old. And just to give you an idea is like, uh, there is almost, there's very limited posability with a kit like this. Just like to, let me take the weapon out of his hand real quick. You can see time did not age well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can see like the forearm came off just for me doing that. But, but just like to give you an idea is like, you can see how it's just pegs and poly caps. And like his hand is like a single rubbery piece of plastic. But there were a few, quite a few parts that had broken on this guy when I decided to rebuild it because it had been so long. Like the, uh, the mounting points on his back for the weapons were broken. So these are completely remade by hand. It's pretty much just a piece of plastic with a metal pin in it that fits into the uh, weapons on the back. But this is, um, specifically, this is the V8 from Gundam Wing. Um, in Gundam Wing, later in the show, uh, the scientists that built the Gundam, that built the Gundams, get captured by Oz, the, basically the enemy faction. And they basically tell him at gunpoint, if you build a suit that can take out the Gundams, or we're going to kill you. <laughs> and so they come up with the Mercurius and the V8. And the V8 is purely an attack suit, and the Mercurius was purely defense. And the idea was they would attack in tandem. So that's why he's got this giant cannon. That's his only weapon, but it, it's like his, it's as powerful as a weapon as they could fit on the suit. And the Mercurius, the one that went with it, is only equipped with like a tiny little pistol. Yeah. But then it has a really powerful multi-range shield. It's like a shield that can float around the other unit while it's attacking. So they attack in tandem. But, uh... I did a few modifications to this kit to bring it up a little bit. Um, I installed some extra thrusters in the legs. These were actually parts taken from an SD kit that I had lying in a bin. Just because on the default kit, there's no detail in there whatsoever. There was a lot of cleanup done. Like normally there's like a seam line between the thighs and uh, the biceps and everything that was cleaned up and removed. You can see there's a bit of metallic detail I brought out with some pastels. Um, all airbrushed, a little bit of hand brushing for the lighter teal around the waist, as well as the details on the head. And uh, normally the Mercury, the V8 only has the single horn. Yeah. But the kit was basically, they use the same mold for the two kits, just with a different horn. So I ended up using the two just because I thought it looked better. In the show, it never had the two, it was only the one. But, um, okay, I think you're good on your end now. Yeah. No, I think we're good. I think we're back streaming now. Yeah, we keep on having internet problems. Yeah, I think we're good over here. Sorry about that, guys. Yep, just a little hiccups. Not too sure what's going on with the internet right now. Yeah, it's it's because I have my laptop plugged in. It's sucking all the power. Old yeah. piece of junk or something. Yeah. But, um, anyway, yeah, that's some of the stuff we got, we have for you guys. Um, we're talking about some other stuff we have planned as well. We're talking about doing a, like a family build night or like a, if you're new to Gundam, doing like a class. Um, we're going to hash out the details and hopefully have some news about that for you guys soon. Um, the idea is, is you'll pay us, we'll pay, you'll pay a certain amount. We don't know exactly what yet, but you'll come in, we'll have tools. You'll get a basic kit to start with. And I'll have panels and slides up on the screens and everything to show you guys what to do. I'll be there to help you out and show everyone how to do like your first model kit. But it would be a good chance, like if you've got a young kid or maybe a spouse or significant other that maybe shown some interest in it but doesn't really know where to start, we're thinking this event might be a really good chance. Um, and like I said, you'll get a kit with it as well. So it's not just you coming through the class, you get a kit to build with we give you all your tools and everything you need to do it so keep an eye on this space we're going to be giving more info about that soon as soon as we hash out all the details for it yeah so probably most likely be on a monday as well yeah but. monday would probably be the best day to do it and we're also talking about um segueing into some stuff that's not necessarily gundam 
Like, Will, I know you're big into Warhammer. We're talking about... Oh, yeah, I started getting into it. It's that rabbit hole, yes. Yeah, you got, you got that new <laughs> army now, so maybe we have an episode where you just come in and show off some of your miniatures, tell us some about the game, some of the history of the factions, that as kind of thing. Well, yeah, as well as maybe even get some people from the Thursday night series. I know some people do Warhammer, some people do D&D, you know, a little yeah, off. Maybe just have like a little feature night for other members of the club and the kind of stuff they're working on. Maybe have them bring in some of their works from exactly. the past and show them off as well. Show us some of the lore behind those universes as well, because those Gundam, D&D, Warhammer, those big universes... Yeah, he's saying have Blandish come on and do Warhammer. He's got quite a bit of stuff. I, he's uh, responsible in no small part, I think, for helping you. Yeah, he might have been. <laughs> he, he, he might have had a been. hand in getting you, uh, <laughs> getting you hooked on Warhammer stuff. He's like, I've been watching some videos online of Total War, and I'm like, I don't need to get into this. I don't need to get into this. I don't need to get into this. Because then I'm like looking at the expansions and things like, oh, God, they're nickel, they nickel and dime you with DLC, too. Exactly. <laughs> it's brutal. But I'm like, the game looks really awesome, but I can't do this. Yeah, the lore is good. The game is good. Yeah, it, it grabs you, definitely. Yeah. It's like, I'm, I'm familiar with Warhammer just from all the jokes and the memes about the... <laughs> But it's like, yeah, I know, the, I know the lore is deep and everything. And I was like, oh man, I like when I started playing XCOM two, I lost oh, about God. four weeks of my life in that. I don't need to, <laughs> Total War seems like a lot longer than XCOM two. <laughs> it's like people with the Vanilla Well re- remake. I know a lot of people. That oh yeah, Vanilla like, Well. It's like, yeah, you want to spend fourteen hours in a dungeon <laughs> like the old days? No, <laughs> I don't. No, but yes. <laughs> How, how is WoW Classic even a thing? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, had to bring out the, their own game to beat their other game. Right. Go ahead and switch the camera. I, was, I actually beta tested the original WoW, and I hated it then. <laughs> I was just like, oh, this, everything takes forever, and everyone's just naked dancing all the time. <laughs> I think that might have just had to do with the fact that the beta testing community is terrible. <laughs> too. But yeah, that's... Like Ben said, we're gonna start. Uh, we're gonna be getting that class going, the starter class. People that never really built it or looking into it, like Ben said, it's easy entry level, small little price. But like Ben said, you'll get a kit as well. He's asking if we know anything about this model kit called Valvery. Valvery was an anime from a few years ago that Bandai did. Um, I haven't built any of the kits from it, but I know the kits look very cool. So if you're still watching, um, if that's something people are interested in, maybe we can get some of those for the club, for the uh, stock of the store as well. That as well, we did find some uh, for Zoids as well. Uh, I got to look into that as well. I know everyone's been asking about Zoid stuff, so we got to find, get some of that in here. But um, if you're if you're into some of the other stuff, it's it's definitely worth looking into the club as well because there's a lot of stuff on there. That's like I said, not Gundam. Like we had a guy that ordered a bunch of the Digimon mm-hmm. kits and stuff like that. And the uh, was the the older anime. The yeah, um, we had a guy that picked up the Walker Gallia yeah, from Z- from Zabungle. Um, somebody picked up some of the Dragonar kits as well, so we got those coming in. Uh, one guy picked up just a ton of the thirty minute mission yeah, kits. Yeah, thirty minute missions. Yeah, probably going to be adding a lot of the parts to his own suits and stuff like that. <laughs> that's what those be good for. But yeah. Um, if you're into some of the stuff that's not necessarily Gundam, it's worth checking out the, uh, the, the club, club. Just because, like I said, you can get a lot of stuff on a distributor order. And we're looking into other distributions as well. So it's not right. just going to be one. It's hopefully in the near future, it'll be a couple. So right. A couple. Yeah. A lot of different options go that way as well. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think that pretty much covers it for this week. Yeah. And as well as we did switch up on Wednesday nights, we're doing the open table night i know wednesday nights we did Yu-Gi-Oh, but now we're going to be doing open table night which started last week so anything from D D, if you can't come on thursdays you want to go somewhere to build gunplor or warhammer or anything like that wednesdays are now open table that does include tcgs like uh, Yu-Gi-Oh, pokemon magic mm-hmm. stuff like that as well so it, everybody's welcome all we just ask is a five dollar donation or five dollars in concessions kind of help with the, with the uh, you know the cost of everything so that's a little bit new on the Flynn side. We just started that last Wednesday. So those are going to be on Wednesdays now. 
Nice. Yeah, and I see you guys have other people coming by on other nights, like just building stuff at the bar and stuff yeah, like exactly. that. Yeah, exactly. It's more than welcome. You know, we have the space, so why not? Yeah, and, you know, people want to get out and everything. Everyone's going a little bit stir crazy. <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit. Just a little bit. But, yeah, right. guys, thank you for watching. Yeah. We'll see you same time next week with another episode of Let's Talk Gunpla. I'll see you guys. Have a good night, guys. Take care.